the role of early childhood development in human capital, and then look specifically at the case of Indonesia, which I know you all know very well, much uh, more probably better than I. So um, the World Bank's human capital project, which works together with other countries, uh, both here in East Asia and also throughout the world, looks at child survival. Uh, so this is survival uh, at birth in the first uh, 100 days. Um, looks at the school enrollment, uh, but not only enrollment, also learning, and then looks at health. And puts these three factors together to have a human capital index. So this is um, how educated and healthy workers and members of society are. This is the human capital index. And the idea behind the idea behind the human capital index uh, is to encourage countries to invest more in people, to invest more in education and health. And the World Bank would like to encourage increased investment in human capital to improve um, learning and education. Why do we think this is important? Uh, if we look at East Asia and Pacific, the East Asia and Pacific countries where children spend more time in school are richer countries. They are doing better. They have more jobs. They have better jobs. They have more productive societies. So investing in people and education makes sense. It will help the country grow in the long term. Uh, same with learning. It's not just about attending school. It's about how much you learn from school. So we launched the human capital uh, in Bali uh, just last year. Um, many of you may have attended that launch. And we are moving forward with uh, multiple different countries to help improve their human capital index. This is uh, one thing that your president, uh, Bapa Jokowi, talks about a lot, right? Human resources, human development, and the skills agenda. So we are working closely with Indonesia on this. When we look at where countries are not doing so well for human capital, uh, it is very commonly on the education side. Yeah, the, the majority of the gap for East Asian countries, that's EAP, East Asia and Pacific countries, the majority of the gap in uh, on the human capital index is on education. So as you all know, there is a lot of work to be done in this area. And it's not only ECD, right? It's also agriculture, uh, nutrition, uh, there is uh, transportation, there is water, uh, issues of governance and corruption. So there are many, many different elements that contribute to the human capital index overall and improving Indonesia's human capital. One particular issue that we're concerned about uh, is learning poverty. Learning poverty is the percentage of children who cannot read and understand a story by age 10. So this is closely aligned with the Sustainable Development Goals 4.2, uh, the work of UNICEF and, and other partners here today. Um, and this is something that is extremely important because after about age 10, which is usually fourth grade, um, children are not taught to read again later. So if you miss learning how to read by about age 10, it is unlikely that you will So this is why I think it is an important One concern we have in Indonesia is that there is no national primary exam 
Indonesia has done very, very well in doing testing, participating in PISA, in TIMS, uh, in many different international exams. And there is also the Ujian Nacional at ninth grade and at 12th grade. But unfortunately, the Ujian Nacional at sixth grade disappeared. There is now a local exam, as you know, given at the end of sixth grade, but the contents of that exam are unclear and are not often reported to MOEC. And so maybe children are learning a lot in primary and maybe not, but it is not possible to say. Uh, and this is a big concern, uh, I think, that we all share, that it is difficult to understand what children are learning without a primary national exam. So the goal uh, that, that we are pursuing is to reduce the share of children who cannot read by, uh, by one half by 2030. This is the learning target. And I talked a little bit about why reading is important. Um, I'm, we're particularly concerned about reading in Indonesia uh, in the absence of a primary exam. And it's connected to ECED uh, by looking at stunting. We all know that stunting is a huge problem in Indonesia. Uh, we know that the rate of stunting has improved slightly, uh, rather gone down. Uh, I think the new data came in just uh, a week or two ago, positive improvement, uh, but there's lots of work to be done. Yeah, the sugary snacks and uh, yummy processed foods that parents like to give their children and children like to eat are not uh, necessarily giving them the nutrients that their developing brains need. Uh, so this is a big challenge for Indonesia. When we look at the participation rates of children in early childhood education, I want to commend the Ministry of Education for reporting more accurate rates. Uh, just a few months ago, the ministry had the courage to transparently report accurate rates for enrollment that were much lower than the rates that had been reported reported in years past, and we congratulate and salute the ministry for this decision. However, there is still a challenge. This is excellent, which needs to be maintained and strengthened. And as we'll discuss in a moment, it's not just enrollment, but it's also the quality of that early childhood education and care that is important. So we'd like to see this number increase and we'd like the quality to improve. The other numbers, enrollment at younger ages, go down significantly. This is normal. Uh, Middle-income countries uh, often have similar results in this range for younger children. But as Indonesia gets richer, as the system improves, we'd like to see higher rates uh, and improved quality. This will help the children learn more and earn more and be healthier and more productive citizens as they grow older. Uh, we have some data here on enrollment uh, by um, province. I think none of this is surprising. Uh, there are some provinces uh, with very low levels of early childhood enrollment. There are other provinces, like many here on the island of Java, with very high prevalence rates. And we feel like one of the main challenges is working with the, those uh, struggling areas, those low performing districts and provinces. And I'm very excited to hear from my colleagues this afternoon about some ways in which uh, we're working on that, um, eager to learn from them. We know that in Indonesia, those that have had access to early childhood have improved learning outcomes. Um, they are able to learn more and learn faster than children who are not enrolled. So the importance of early childhood is very clear. It also leads to children staying in school longer and 
earning more when they complete their education, whether they leave at the end of high school or whether they have some years of university, their lifetime earning is higher if they have participated in high quality early childhood education. We looked at some of this work in Indonesia specifically, and we found that there were differences whether children participated only in playgroups or only kindergarten, so one or the other, or in the second graph, uh, children who participated in both and had at least two years of early childhood. And you can see clearly those that had two years and did both playgroup and kindergarten learned more and scored higher when they reached primary school. And so this is part of the reason why we are encouraging and wanting to support an expansion of access to multiple years of quality education pre-primary. We talked a little bit earlier about quality. It's not only about enrolling children, it's also about making sure that they have access to toys, other appropriate um, learning materials. And when I say learning materials, I don't mean math or books. I mean uh, play-oriented materials that are appropriate for young children who learn as they play. So we're not advocating to turn play groups into work groups or study groups. We want them to be fun. We want them to be welcoming to children so that as they play and work together, they can learn more. If you look at the right-hand side, um, there is some significant concerns about the quality of some of the early childhood uh, services provided. Um, some of the centers don't really meet the minimum quality standards. And so we feel there is broad scope and great need for additional investment in improving existing early childhood services and at the same time expanding access. So instead of talking for five hours, I think I would like to wrap up here with the overall message that uh, we feel it is very important that Indonesia continue to make efforts to expand access to early childhood education and improve the quality of early childhood education to become a more rich, prosperous, and happy country. And we look forward to working with you on this. Makasih banyak.